Hey, I'm Ryan, and today I want to talk to you about a way to build GraphQL servers that looks a little bit different than maybe the typical approach that people might take, the typical approach of building a schema-first GraphQL API. I'm going to talk about code-first GraphQL API, specifically with Nexus Schema. So my name is Ryan Chanky. I am a GraphQL developer advocate at Prisma, and at Prisma, we deal with databases. We make it really easy to get started with a database to have a, a really nice ORM around your database. We give you type safe database access, which is uh, is very nice to work with if you are, especially if you're working with TypeScript in Node.js. You can find me there on Twitter. I'm at Ryan Shanky on Twitter. So let's talk about building GraphQL APIs. Uh, when we come to build a GraphQL API, and when we, typically when we're first learning how to build a GraphQL API, we take the approach of what we call schema first, and uh, we use what's called the schema definition language uh, approach to build a GraphQL server. And so many of us have seen this if we've gone through the initial kind of getting started phases, or even if we're, we've built full out GraphQL APIs, where we start with a schema definition language and we define our types and our input types and all that. And then we have a set of resolvers that, uh, that map up to it. But this isn't the only way to do it. Uh, even though it's easy to get going with, it does kind of present some challenges that uh, that we'll have to deal with um, along the way. Um, most examples show how to do this schema definition language first approach, especially if you follow like the Apollo tutorials, for example, you're going to see this SDL first way of building a GraphQL server. And you know it's, it's easy to get started with, but uh, ultimately it's going to lead to maybe some complexities that are better dealt with in a different approach. Um, this is what it looks like. You would have your schema definition language. Here we've got a type of post and three fields. We've got the ID, title, and body. And so you may be familiar with this. This might feel quite comfortable. We've then got our, our root query type where we are returning a list of posts. Now, with the schema definition language, this isn't all you need when you go to write your server. You also need a set of resolvers. So for this example, we need to map together a resolver for our root query type, which can return those posts. So it's two different pieces of code. There's the schema definition language, and then there is some JavaScript or whatever other language we might be working in that we have to take care of to, to make this GraphQL server do what it, uh, what it should do. And this, like I was just mentioning, comes with some issues. So what are these issues? Well, when we're working with schemas and resolvers um, separately, they're in different places. They're in two different spots in the file system. Um, we get into issues around modularization. So if we want to have a large GraphQL API, oftentimes we want to break up our schema into smaller kind of sub modules. And this is doable, but it kind of presents some challenges when it comes to mapping all of that together in the end, tying them all together into uh, to one root server. So you know you've got your resolvers in one place, you've got your schema in another place, and you've got to you've got to switch back and forth between the two. You've got to do a lot of context switching when you're writing your code, um, and that context switching I think comes with a cost. You are working in one kind of language at one time, and then another at another time, and uh, you know this this might get to be somewhat trivial if you're well experienced, but uh, even for those of us who who have a lot of experience, experience with it, it does come at a cost, switching back and forth between these two kinds of modes of thinking. You also uh, will need some tooling when you're, you're going into an SDL first approach. You need tooling to make your schema definition language, uh, you know, even, even just code highlighted appropriately. You need some extensions in your code editor. You need uh, some things to, to modularize those, uh, your, your schema and the resolvers that go along with them. So there's, there's a need for additional tooling to come along for the ride if you're going to work in this way. We can take a different approach. We can take the code first approach to writing GraphQL APIs. And what that looks like is a little something like this. This is Nexus in this example. Example, and we're defining a GraphQL schema here, but we're doing it all in code. So this happens to be TypeScript. We've got this thing called object type from Nexus schema, which allows us to define a type. In this case, it's that post type. And then we've got this definition method where we can say, we want an ID, named ID. That's what we're doing there when we do t.id. And then we want some strings, t.string with title and body. So this gives us our schema definition language, but we've done it in code. So 
what, what's the benefit of this? Well, if we hop over to our root query type, it gets really interesting. What we're doing here is we're saying that on the root query type, we want a field called posts and we are telling it how to resolve with the data for that post field right here in place. So we've done all the work to come up with a GraphQL schema and the associated resolver, resolver for the post type in this case, all in the same spot. This is, uh, this is just kind of one file that we're working in. No need to context switch between uh, different, different types of code. And we've, we've accomplished everything we need right here. So the code first approach for GraphQL APIs has uh, a number of benefits. Again, everything's in one spot. No need to switch back and forth between different, uh, different files. Uh, the modularization part of it becomes quite easy because instead of that extra tooling that's needed to, to modularize a schema, um, we basically just import and export uh, pieces of TypeScript or JavaScript. And then we can bring that into a root, uh, root file and then serve it up. So it becomes very easy to, to go ahead and, and serve your GraphQL API in that way. No need for extra tooling to help get the job done. Um, everything is just JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, and we get some uh, cool side benefits from this. We get, uh, if we're using Nexus, for example, we have code gen at work. We get generated artifacts like the schema definition language file um, and a set of types associated with, uh, with our, our API. And so that's beneficial for putting uh, putting different extensions for our editors to work, for example. So we can take our SDL and we can tell our front-end applications uh, what we are able to query from our back-end just based on, on that SDL. And it becomes very easy to, to get all the benefits of what we would have from a schema definition language file along with a code-first approach. And ultimately, we can move easily and quickly, collaborate easily and quickly if we're using a code-first approach too. So let's take a look at how this might work. Let's do a demo. Um, this here is a basic Nexus schema powered uh, GraphQL API, and it's using Apollo server. Ultimately, we need a server to serve this thing up, um, but we're, we're constructing this API with Nexus schema. And so what it looks like if we go over to the browser, um, we've got just this simple hello world example at play right now. And so that gives us a, uh, an API all based on this code right here. We're defining our query type. We're telling it how to resolve all in one spot. No need to separate those things out. So I figure what we'll do because we're here at GraphQL Galaxy, let's see how we can come up with uh, a little bit of an API for planets. Um, so we can talk about the planets in our solar system. To do that, we would do a constants and maybe call it planets. And that's going to equal something called object type. We want to define uh, an object type. So this would be like if you were in your uh, schema definition language and you were defining a type for something. That comes out of Nexus schema. We have to give it a name, so let's call it planet. And then we give it some definition. And the definition, again, is something where we do like t.id to give ourselves an ID. So it's uh, a type of ID and the name for it is going to be ID. And then let's have a string field and we'll give the planet a name and another string field to give the planet a type. All right, so we've got our planet type. We have to put it in here into the types array when we make our uh, schema, it has to go in there so that, that it becomes available. And then on our root query type now, we can define something in addition to this string field that we've got. And we can say, give us a list field called planets. Let's say we want to have something that gives us a list of planets. We have to tell it what type to resolve with. We wanna resolve with the planet type, and then we can set a resolver. So the resolver, the resolve function might look like this. We can return an array. We'll have some objects in there. Let's see, say ID will be one and name can be earth and type can be Rocky, something like that. So if we're now back over in our GraphQL playground, let's see if we can get that out. So we can do planets, do ID, name and type. 
there we go. So we've got our planets array coming back and uh, we didn't need to, again, define a schema and then define resolvers. It's all happening just in one spot here. So really a powerful way to get, uh, get everything into to the mix to, to make our API. Let's see how we can get a real database in here. And we can do that really easily with Prisma. Prisma happens to tie in really well to, uh, to GraphQL and to, to Nexus in particular. So I've got Prisma installed and to get it going, I can do NPX Prisma init like that. And what that will do is create this Prisma file, which gives me a schema, this schema.prisma file. And there's a bunch of different databases supported. I'm going to use SQLite, so a file system database in this case, just for the purposes of the demo. And that's going to point to a file called dev.db. And then I can create a model. And the model will be planets. This kind of maps to a table that we'll create in the database. And we'll have an ID. We'll set it as type string. And we'll say that this is going to be the ID. The, uh, this is going to be the, the primary key for, for this table. And the default value. We'll give it a default, can be a collision resistant universal ID. Uh, we'll want name as a string, and we will want type as a string as well. So that's all we need for our database model. And then we can do this. We can do npx prisma db push. And this is actually a preview feature right now. So we'll just pass that flag. And if we do that, we get a dev.db uh, inserted into our Prisma. This is our database itself for, for SQLite. And let's take a look at this uh, database. NPX Prisma uh, Studio gives us a graphical user interface to take a look at what's inside our database. And we can see we've got our planet table. Um, we can add some records. So we'll say Earth, type is Rocky. We can add a couple more. Let's say Mars, that's Rocky as well. And uh, we'll add a, a, one last one. Jupiter is gas giant. All right, we'll save those three changes. So that's in our database. Uh, we're good to go there. And so now over in our server.ts, let's bring in Prisma to actually do this work. We can import Prisma client from at Prisma client. And then we can say const Prisma equals a new Prisma client. And we can take a look at what's available on Prisma if we just do a dot. And immediately, we're taken to this planet property. And this maps over to our database. Um, we get basically all the type information generated for us that we would need to, to do our queries. Um, so if we want to resolve with the planets from our database, we can do this. We will return Prisma planet find many. And if we do that, and we go back over to our, our uh, GraphQL playgrounds, let's hit go on that. And we get all the planets coming out of our database. So immediately here, we've got the benefit of, um, of a GraphQL API written in a code first way and a type safe way to access uh, our database. One final thing that we'll show is how we would get that, uh, that SDL produced as an artifact from this code first approach. And to do that, we can do um, something here on our make schema where we define some outputs. And there are two that we might be interested in. One would be the schema. And for this, let's do this. We'll say the directory name slash generated slash slash schema dot graphql schema dot graphql so that's one thing we might want and we also might want type gen those will that will generate the the types for us and for this we can say maybe types.ts and what we should get if i save this immediately what we'll see is this generated folder pops up here if we take a look we've got the schema def schema definition language that maps to uh to the schema we've defined with nexus so basically we've got all of the benefits of a code first approach we don't have to move around throughout our file system we can define everything in the same place both our schema and our resolvers but we also get the schema for our um uh, our actual schema portion of our GraphQL API produce for us, and we can use this elsewhere. And then we get a set of types that come here that we can use across our application. And where it gets really interesting, especially with Prisma in the mix, is Prisma gives us the type information for, um, 
for our uh, our API, essentially our, our database. And so we can use this type of planet, for example, in various places across our application. So again, the benefit here is a, uh, a code first approach is going to give us um, an easy way to stay in the same spot, not have to context switch, not have to bring extra tooling, and ultimately give us a really nice developer experience when building a GraphQL API. So that is it for the demo. Um, and that is it for the talk. If you want to get the slides uh, for this talk, you can go to this link. It's a bit.ly link slash GraphQL Galaxy. We'll get you to the slides. You can check us out. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter if you like. Ryan Chanky is my um, my handle on Twitter. You can check out Prisma on Twitter. It's uh, it's at Prisma or go to Prisma.io to find out more uh, if you're interested in, in Prisma or Nexus because Prisma takes care of Nexus schema um, as, as a contributor slash author. And you can find out more about all of this if you check us out on Twitter or go to Prisma.io. Thank you.